Right, welcome to this short video on exam success for the Sitting Guilds 2382 exam and for BS7671 2018, currently amendment 2. Okay, as we run through, remember to pause the video as we are jumping to contents, pages and index uh, and then bouncing back into the front of the book to try to find the, the answer for the question. Okay, so obviously point number one, read the question. Okay, um, some of the wording in the questions might trip you up, but irrespective of that, uh, the best thing to do after you've read the question is read the answers. Sounds obvious, doesn't it? But read the question, read the answer, rather than going down rabbit hole or trying to find the answer in the book. You might know the answer, it might be rattling about in the back of your head somewhere. Okay, um, if you know the answer, answer it and move on. Try and save that time, try and uh, get that time in your back pocket for the, the other end of the exam okay uh, where you're looking for questions that you're struggling to, to find the answer on um, so if you know the answer answer it and move on in fact if you're 80 percent sure you know the answer answer it flag it and move on okay if you don't know the answer Look at the key words in the question uh, and the answers to find your answer. Try and plan out that logic diagram in your head as to how you're going to answer this question. Okay. Um, if you have been looking for two minutes uh, and you have not found your answer yet, answer it to the best of your ability. Flag the question again, but write the number down on your wee sheet of paper that you use for logging in. All right. Uh, that just gives you something to focus on later on. Uh, when you're actually finished your 60 questions. Remember, there's a bunch of questions at the start and at the end that you should be able to get roughly 100% on for each section. Uh, you don't want to miss that almost guaranteed 100% uh, in those sections at the tail end, okay? Just because you've wasted time in the middle of your uh, assessment. So paper one, questions one through 10. Remember, pause the video as we go, all right? Question one, which of the following is excluded from the scope of BS 7671? We've got equipment of aircraft, caravans, commercial premises and agricultural and horticultural premises. I don't know about you, but I have never fitted a socket on a plane. But let's look at the answer route. So we've got scope and we have exclusions from the scope. Okay, so we're going to look at the index at the back of the book. And in the index, we have scope. And then we have chapter 11, okay? When we get into chapter 11, we then have 110.2 uh, exclusions from the scope. And if you look down exclusions from the scope there, we've got 0.6 equipment of aircraft. So our first indication was right, okay? Question two, we've got which of the following is included in the scope of BS 7671 and we have lightning protection systems, equipment of motor vehicles, those aspects of mines and quarries covered by statutory regulations and photovoltaic systems. I know where I'm leaning, however, I reckon straight off the bat we can take these two um, off the table, okay? Motor vehicles and mines and quarries covered by statutory regulations. I don't think they're covered by BS7671. However, myself as an electrician, I have installed lightning protection systems. I have installed photovoltaic systems. Okay, so that leaves us in a wee quandary. Again, we're back into the index and we're looking at scope and chapter 11. In 110.1, in the general list, if you scroll down the general list, you'll see there in point 18, we have solar photovoltaic power supply systems. That's the name its mammy gives it, yeah, for the solar panels that we stick on the roof. In fact, if you were to bounce back into those exclusions from the scope, you'll see there we've got motor vehicles in point 3. We've got that, mines and quarries, yeah under uh, covered by statutory regulations in point uh, seven and then in point nine we'll get lightning protection systems that are excluded from the scope okay um question three which person makes a recommendation for the interval to the first periodic inspection and test of an electrical installation uh if you know anything about the electrical contracting industry it's definitely not the person ordering the work right by the time the installer and the person carrying out the initial verification rock up, 
that decision should have been made by the designer. How does that person make that decision? Well, in consultation with this person here, they need to find out what this, what the installation is going to entail. Yeah, where it is, what the uh, person ordering the works, what their expected um, maintenance program is going to be, so that they can then make that first periodic inspection or recommendation. Okay. If you go down the route of looking at periodic inspection for that first periodic inspection, then you're not going to find it directly at the, regula uh, the regulation. So in the index periodic inspection, you would have a recommendation form that would take you to 135.1. And in 135.1, it's not there. As I said, it's not directly there. But however, if you were to look to the regulation directly before it, the last regulation and initial verification, then you would find that the designer makes that decision. If you go down the route for uh, initial verification, when that decision is made, then it takes you to 134.2. Okay. Um, and 134.2 is the start of that uh, regulation group there. Yeah. And we get that first uh, periodic inspection and taste that decision that gets made by the designer. Then we have question four there. We've got a definition conductive part of equipment which can be touched and which is not normally alive but which can become live under fault conditions. Describes which of the following, and then we'll get these four uh, definitions that we need to go and find. Okay, my answer route for this is going to be A, B, no, not A, B, C, D, it's going to be B, A, C, D. I well. Expose comes before extraneous, extraneous comes before live, live comes before protective conductor. I'm just alphabetizing it, trying to save myself time, okay, rather than bouncing through the book. Now, just by chance, expose conductive part happens to be the one that we're looking for, but if this was the second, third, or fourth one, you would just bounce through the rest of your definitions looking for it, unless you uh, knew it, okay. Question five Where equipment is to be installed and it must be capable of being submersed in water? And with standard temperature range of minus 25 degrees to plus 5 degrees C, the categories of classification of external influence for this equipment must be which of the following? And then we've got a list of external influence codes. So we're going and looking for external influences. We find that in Appendix 5, okay? When we're in uh, Appendix 5, we're looking for water and temperature ranges. And there's the temperature range and the fact that for water, the equipment is immersed. It's not immersed, sorry, submersed. Okay, so Appendix 5, we've got this big concise list. First thing in the concise list is that ambient temperature, double A. So AA3 has that minus 25 to plus 5 degrees C. And if we look further down to water and we scroll down through water, you'll see that AD8 has submersion. Yeah, so there you go, we've found our answer. Question six, which of the following items of information might you be required to supply to the distributor prior to receiving a connection? If you have ever had to contact the DNO, the distributor, um, you know that upon inquiry, regulation 28, the ESQCR regs, which, which you can find in uh, appendix two and BS7671, upon inquiry, the DNO, amongst other things, has to give you the nominal voltage, the tightening rate and the overcome protective devices, the origin of the supply and the external air fault loop impedance, or their expected external air fault loop impedance. Um, the one thing that we have to give them is a maximum demand and the designer carries out that calculation at the outset. So how would you find it? Well, it would be supplies that you would be looking for. So purposes, supplies and structure down near the front of the book. And that first sentence there in 311.1 tells you that you have to calculate it. The maximum demand has to be determined. You can see that there. Okay. Question seven, which one of the following is not recognised as a source for safety services? Okay, so we've got a separate feeder, we've got storage batteries, we've got distributor supply without backup. We question mark there for this one. Uh, and then generator sets independent of the normal supply. So we're looking for safety services and we're looking for sources and not are recognised or not recognised sources. Okay. Uh, 
if you get into safety services, you'll see this big section with all these uh, subsections um, below it. I'll be honest with you, if you look in chapter 35 or chapter 56 in skim read, you will no doubt find it. However, let's go and find it directly. So we're looking at sources and then further down sources, we have our recognised sources and it gives us uh, regulation 351.1 and 560.6.1. 351.1 there's our list of sources the one that's not there is that uh, generator supply uh, generators distributor supply without backup yeah that's not on the list and if you look in 560.1 that distributor supply without backup is also not on the list there as well question eight which of the following is not a protective measure mm, I like that question um Possibly not a protective measure for use by ordinary persons. Might have been a better way of word than this one. So we have placing out a reach, self, electrical separation and automatic disconnection of the supply. Two ways we could look at this. We could look at protection for safety where we have our protective measures listed. And you'll see there that obstacles and placing out a reach is not one of the ones that's got the heading of protective measure. Yeah. So obstacles in place in their outer reach doesn't have that protective measure, whereas the other three on the list are there. If you look at protective measures, wait a minute, what have we got? We've got obstacles in place in outer reach there. But we're looking for general application. Yeah. Okay. So general application. 41033. If you look at 41033, the general application, there you'll see the four protective measures that we had on the previous page yeah for our uh, general fault protection that we utilize okay 41035 uh, we have that obstacles in place now at reach but you see that's restricted to installations where we've got skilled persons yeah or instructed persons that are under the supervision of skilled persons if you look at 417 uh, which this one is then that regulation there is previously directing you to uh, you'll see that it provides basic protection only okay uh, question nine a barrier or enclosure requires a degree of protection to at least and then we've got these ip codes so wherever it is we're going we are skimming for ip codes so we're looking at barriers or enclosures we're also looking for this term here at least yeah we're looking for degree of protection as well okay so barriers or enclosures in the index, we have degrees of protection and we've got 41621 and 41622. So if we look at 41621, there you go straight off the bat, we've got IP codes and then reading round about the IP codes, we see that at least a degree of protection. There you go, IPXXB, IP2X. Question 10. Maximum disconnection time for a TN system with a nominal voltage of 400 volts AC, which uh, is which of the following, right? So what's the disconnection time? So we're looking at disconnection times max, yeah? Okay. And we're also going to be looking at that 400 volts. So if we have a look at disconnection times, we have distribution circuits, fault clearance, and final circuits. Now, the fact that it didn't mention distribution circuits leads me to believe that we are looking at final circuits okay so final circuits uh 411.3224 and table 41.1 if we look at 411.3222 that gives us the basic general circuits that we're dealing with and then it takes us to table 41.1 and then we've got that uh, less than or equal to 400 volts so for a tn system it's four uh, for, for a 400 volt TN system, it's 0.2 of a second, right? So that's the first 10 questions. I know it was a bit of a pace. Remember, pause the go back, rewatch the video, pause it at points as we're bouncing through. Give yourself time, make sure that you can format that answer route. Remember, if you know the answer, answer it, move on. If you are 80% sure you know the answer, answer it and move on. If you know how to find the answer, find the answer, answer it and move on. If you've been hunting for two minutes and you can't find the answer, answer it, move on and come back to it later. Best of luck uh, in your exam, folks.